Did you know that the Department of Transportation estimates that nearly 5 million gallons of fuel a day are being wasted because of cars that are running on tires that are underinflated? Or that 24,000 accidents a year can be attributed to tire failure? That's just a few of the reasons that we, as professional technicians, need to inspect the tires on every car we service. And that's the subject of this edition of The Trainer. Hey, I'm Pete Meyer, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. Thanks for joining us. You ever hear that saying where the rubber meets the road? Well, that was actually an old tire company slogan from many years ago. But did you know that the contact patch, the point where your tires meet the road, is only about the size of your hand? NBA players lay a bigger contact patch with their Reeboks than your car's tires do, and they do it under a lot less stress. Now think about that a minute all the way the vehicle and its occupants are riding on these four small patches. Add in the dynamics of acceleration, braking, cornering, and you can see, as one manufacturer used to say, there's a lot riding on your tires. You know, tire manufacturers spend a lot of money, millions in fact, on the development of new products. And they develop these products to deliver good ride quality, good handling, and long life, provided they're properly maintained. Otherwise, all that money is right down the drain. And the biggest lack of maintenance? Keeping the tires properly inflated. Now, if you've been in this business as long as I have, or even just a few months, you've already seen that nearly every car that comes into your bay has at least one tire that's grossly underinflated. An underinflated tire is gonna run hotter, which means it's going to wear out faster. And it also burns more fuel. These are just a couple of good reasons to make sure that you check every tire that comes into your shop. And it's a good reason for you to educate your customers on the importance of checking their tire pressures regularly. You know, but a professional inspection starts as soon as you bring the car into the bay. Take a moment to check the instrument cluster for a TPMS, that's Tire Pressure Monitoring System, warning light as you cycle the key on for the normal bulb check. You want to check for the presence of these systems just in case there's a problem that you need to know about and your customer needs to know about with the function of either the tires or this TPMS system itself. Now we've covered the TPMS system in quite some detail. You'll find a lot of resources in the AutoPro workshop on MotorAge.com. I invite you to go check those out. The main thing we want to know though right now is, does it have the system installed? Are the sensors working? Does it indicate a problem with any of the tires right off the bat? Keep in mind though, the TPMS is designed to warn of a serious underinflation issue usually a 20% threshold, that's too much, does not eliminate the need for routine tire pressure checks. As you get out of the car, check the door jam or B-pillar for the presence of the tire information placard. This is where you're going to find the correct tire specifications for the car that you're working on. If you don't see a placard on the door, check the owner's manual or your service information system for the correct pressures. Now you're going to need three tools to do a professional tire inspection. The first is a good tire gauge, like this one. Uh, now you want to look for a gauge that's going to give you no more than two PSI variance from what the actual pressure is. That's not plus or minus guys, that's two PSI total in order to be sure that you've got a gauge that's accurate enough to do the job. Uh, this is also the spec, by the way, for you guys out in California where checking tire pressures on every car you service is mandatory by regulation. Now the other thing you're going to need is a good tire tread depth gauge so that you can accurately measure the amount of wear uh, that has occurred on the tire. Last, a tire crayon to make sure that you can make a note uh, on the tire of anything that you find that you need to bring to your service manager or to the customer's attention. Now, before you ask, yes, if you have a digital tire gauge, that's fine. They're very easy to use, very quick, and of course, very accurate. So either is a good choice to use when checking the tire pressures. And that's where we're going to start. Check the tire pressures and compare them to spec. If they're low, you can go ahead and correct them as you go. Now here's a couple of words for you on that. If the tire has been run or the car has been driven more than a mile, 
the tires heated up. And if you remember back from your old science classes back in high school, the heat's going to cause the pressure to increase. That's a very common DIY mistake. They go ahead and drive up to their local convenience store to use the air pump. They check their tire pressures after they've driven there. They see the tire pressures appear to be correct, so they don't do anything. In actuality, the tires are, are three to four PSI higher than what they really are. And let me clarify. If you have a tire that's specified to be 32 PSI and you check it hot and it reads 32 PSI, the actual pressure, the cold pressure, the temperature that it's supposed to be checked at is probably closer to 27, 28. That means the tire is underinflated by a significant amount. Now, if you're checking the tires hot and you find them at specification or lower, we'll go ahead and, and, and add air to them, but add about three or four pounds more than specification and advise your customer that he needs to recheck those once the tires have gotten cold. Now, according to the Tire Industry Association, that's gonna take about three hours When's the best time to check your tires? Hey, how about first thing in the morning after it's been sitting overnight? Now, if you should find a tire that's a lot lower than the others on the car, that's usually a good indication that there's a puncture in the tire somewhere. You need to take a close look to see if you can see where. Make sure you check both the inner and outer side walls and all around the tread block for evidence of a, a nail, screw, rock, anything that might have punctured through the tire and caused this loss of air. Uh, if you do find it, here's a couple of guidelines. If it's less than a quarter inch in diameter and it's located in the center tread block, you can go ahead and repair it. As long as there's no more than two other repairs to begin with, please. No more than two per tire. Uh, if it's outside of that, that repair zone, if it's in the outer or in the sidewall, or it's larger than a quarter inch in diameter, that cannot be repaired. The tire must be replaced. And don't forget to check the spare, the condition of the spare. Uh, another note on repairs. Never, ever, ever plug a tire. Never, ever, ever just stick a plug in from the outside. Why? A couple of reasons. Number one, you don't get the tire apart. You can't inspect the inside for any signs of damage that might have been caused by the tire running low. Overheat damage, separation of the inner liner, anything at all like that that you need to see. And secondly, there's nothing on the inside to repair the inner liner. So if that plug should pop out, it's going to be a blowout. It's going to be a catastrophic loss of air. Now what about patching on the inside? Well, that's okay as long as you use a patch plug combination. Why both? Well, the patch takes care of the inner liner, sure, and that helps reseal the inside of the tire where all the air is being kept, but nothing's filling the hole. Nothing's filling that path through the tread and into the tire that whatever made the hole cause. That needs, needs to be filled. Why? Because if there's nothing there, water debris can work its way between the tread block and the body of the tire. That could result in a structural failure, separation of the tread. We don't want that. So always repair it properly with a plug patch combination. The next step in your inspection is to check the tire tread depth, and you're going to use a tool specifically for that purpose, a depth gauge. You just extend the gauge, insert it into the groove between the tread blocks, and then bring the tool into contact with the top of the tread blocks. Remove it and get your reading. Now this one's in 30 seconds. Find the match closest to it, running right about 730 seconds on this tread. But I don't want to just check it in one spot. I want to check it on both sides and, if possible, in the middle. And I want to do that in, in uh, at least three places around the tire. This is going to help me detect any abnormal wear and allow me to take any corrective actions that are possible in order to make sure the tire isn't ruined. Check each tire for abnormal wear by carefully running your hands around the outer circumference of the tire. Anything that doesn't feel other than smooth could indicate a problem with the suspension or steering components or considerable underinflation, overinflation, depending on the pattern on the tire. Whatever it is, it bears investigating so that you don't ruin the next set of tires the same way these got ruined. Make sure you do a visual inspection as well. Look for physical damage to the tire, look for cracking in the area where the bead and sidewall meet and in between the tread blocks and tread elements on the, on the outer circumference of the tire. Check the DOT number. The last four digits represent the week, two digits, and the year, two digits, that make up the, uh, the tire, when the tire was made. 
Sometimes tires need to be serviced because of an age issue, ozone damage, smog damage, uh, or just because they've been sitting for a long, long time and not used. Uh, typically tires that are, are in everyday use aren't going to have this issue, but consider for a moment a spare tire that's been in the trunk since the car was new and never used. You go to look at the tire, it's badly what I would call dry rotted, split, cracked, underinflated. Uh, would you trust that to your car? No, I don't think so. So don't use age alone as a reason to recommend replacement, but do factor the age of the tire and the wear evidence in your decision in recommending whether the tire should be replaced or not. Last item for today, uh, I've got a few words on rotation and replacement for you. Rotation is important because it helps ensure that the four tires wear out evenly and can be replaced as a set of four. We all know that customers aren't doing that. They're not rotating the tires. So they end up replacing pairs of, uh, uh, of tires instead of all four. Maybe we're putting two on the front, two on the back, whatever the case might be. Um, those are the ones that are worn out and need attention. But I want to tell you something, guys. There are some cars in the market today where that's just plain out can't do it. The OEM specifically states that all four tires have to be replaced and not just two. Why? Because it can interfere with some of the systems on the car, like electronic stability control. Even the transmission control strategies on some vehicles can be impacted when there's old tires on one axle and new tires on another. Now, if you absolutely have to put on a pair of new tires, you're not doing the set, make sure you put the new tires on the back, especially on front wheel drive cars. Now why is that? Well think about it. You're getting off the interstate, you're on the on-ramp, the roads are wet, the front tires are new and they're gripping that wet pavement really well. The rear tires, not so much. So maybe you're going a little hotter than you should have and you find that the rear end is trying to pass you on the exit ramp. That's not a good situation to be in. Switch those tires around. Now the weak ones are in the front. You're going to feel that in the steering. You're going to be able to make the corrections, slow down. The rear tires, of course, are biting a lot better than the front, so they're not going anywhere. Keeps you in a lot better control, your customer in a lot better control of their vehicle. So again, if you're replacing just two tires, the new ones go on the back. What about one tire, Pete? Well, if, if you're replacing just one tire, that one goes on the back, and the best of the three go on the back with it. You put the worst two up front. Um, another word here on, uh, on tire replacement. Check the tire placard, uh, not only for air pressures, but for the size recommendations, speed rating, and load uh, rating of the tires that are supposed to be on that car. Never go below any of those. Make sure that you're fitting the right tire to the car. Uh, what about these big 20, 22, 23 inch wheels that, get, that guys want? Well, you know what? They are not designed for that vehicle. The vehicle is not designed for those tires. It's gonna have a dramatic impact on ride quality, handling, braking. Personally, well, we won't go there. Suffice it to say, I'm a big believer that I stick with what the tire placard recommends. Um, another note for you, anything that you find wrong with the tires or any other safety item for that matter, make sure you note it on the repair order and that you bring it to your customer's attention this is called CYA, cover your backside, fellas. Not only for the personal liability, but you wanna make sure the customer understands the seriousness of the problem. If you have a tire that's bald, and you send him on the road and you don't tell him or you don't correct it or you don't make a note out of it, you could be held liable for it. Tell the customer, make sure they acknowledge that in some way, shape, or form on your repair order if they refuse to take action on it. And again, this applies to any safety issue that you find. You're protecting yourself and you're protecting your customer. Well, that's all the time we got for today. Hey, I'm really glad that you joined me in watching the trainer. I'll see you next month.